Hello, and welcome to Reading with Willa. Today we are reading The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Today your readers are Willa, which is me, so hello, Caitlin, hey, and Jacqueline. Hello. I hope you enjoy today's reading. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They live with their mother in a sandbank, underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Miss Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away into Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans. Then, he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed o all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes amongst the cabbages and another shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not unfortunately ran into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. And rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over, carefully looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Gachoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. And tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of the window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright. He had not the least idea which way to go. He was also very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in the wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, and she had a large pea in her mouth, and she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it was best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, Little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, 
scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped under the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside of the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for the, a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand in the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The, the end. end! Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed. More videos will be posted next week of reading. Next week we are reading a book by a family friend about corgis, so I hope you tune in. Um, soon we'll be showing a craft for this video, so you'll be seeing that in the next clip. Thank you! Hello everyone! Here's the craft section. Today I will be showing you how to draw a rabbit with a little fluffy tail. So what you will need is a pencil, um, a glue stick, or a bottle of glue, whichever you prefer to use. Um, a cotton ball or a cotton like pad. Um, some tape if you don't have glue, but if you do have glue, you should use the glue. <laughs> and some colored pencils in any colored pencils will do, or you can use crayons or markers, whatever you have that you can color with. Make sure you ask permission, and if you need any help, make sure you ask an adult. So I'm going to be showing you how to draw a little rabbit to go along with our Peter Rabbit book that we read. I'm going to make this rabbit look like Peter, but I'll also show you how to just make a normal rabbit too. So let's get in. So first we want to draw a little head. So you can just make that a nice little circle. Right? And we can add some rabbit's ears. See? Then do little ovals inside the ears for like the little pink parts of the ear. Um, then you want to put a little eyes. For these you can do any kind of shape that you want. Like I'm going to do a little My rabbit's eyes are just little circles and the top part is darker. But you can do any kind of shape that you want. I'm going to color those in a little bit. See? Now we're going to do some little eyebrows. <laughs> we're going to put a little nose here. And two little swerved lines for the rabbit. Um, then we're going to do some whiskers. And there we have the rabbit's face. So then for its body, we're going to go like this. So, I'm going to change that a little bit. So for its body, you just want to do a little neck here. And then you want to go down and then curve around. And then you can just do a little line like that. Then we do like a straight line coming down, and then have a little foot at the bottom. And you can go up. And there you go, you have your little rabbit's body. I should fix that line a little bit. 
and it's okay if you're making mistakes or if it doesn't look the same because everyone's gonna look different and mistakes are very easy to fix with an eraser or if you want to change anything so there's a little rabbit and I'm gonna add a little coat so he looks like Peter because in the book Peter wears a little blue coat that actually has little buttons on it so here's his little coat and some buttons and again the beauty of using a pencil is you have its eraser right there you go so here's a little rabbit I'm gonna add an extra foot right there in the background so I'm gonna take brown and you can use any color for your rabbit even if it's not traditional rabbit colors it doesn't matter because it's just it's your rabbit I'm gonna leave a little white spot in the middle for a little white stomach for our Peter and we're coloring the nice rabbit in you don't have to color the eyes in gray I just did that I might erase them I don't know so I can make them a color for color you can again you can make this any colors you want it doesn't have to be brown it doesn't have to be gray any color that you want if your pencil is a lighter color and whatever you're using to color in your rabbit with is kind of dark you can go over the pencil again you can go over your original drawing again with um, the pencil again or you can go over it with like a black marker or crayon you can like outline it again in black crayon or pencil or marker whatever you have And if you get outside the lines, again, there's erasers. If you're using pencil, if you're using marker, you can just add to it. If you're using crayons, you can also add to it. So I'm going to leave his little feet white and his stomach's white. So. There we go. So let me find a black pencil. Let's see. Aha! There it is, I think. Let's see. Nope, that's blue. <laughs> What's this one? This is black. Aha! My black colored pencil. I'm gonna go over the eyes again and the nose you can make your nose any color you want again I was planning on making it pink but you really couldn't see it so I just went over it with black see there he is a nice little rabbit There's his buttons, and there's his little stomach, and I'll go over his paws again. Again, this is an optional step. You guys don't have to do this. I just wanted to. <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes sometimes, I can see right there, so I'm going to fix that in a second. And I'm going to erase some of the lines that I uh, don't need. So you can always go over it, or you can color over it again. I don't know if you could really see it too much before I erased it. But there's that. And I'm going to erase the gray line since I went over them again. I'm going to take this little light blue. And I'm going to color it in. So we 
has a little blue jacket. And what color should we make his eyes? Let's do... Let's do green. There we go. His nice little green eyes. And we're going to do some pink ears. <laughs> I accidentally scraped my pencil on it. That's okay. There we go. Now you take your cotton ball or cotton swab. Well, not swab. Um, pad. And you're gonna. If it's a cotton pad, you're gonna squish it together. And if it's a cotton pad, then you don't have to do this extra step. Just I. I'm using a cotton pad. So. So open your glue or glue stick. Ooh, doesn't want to open. <laughs> there it is. And you're gonna put it, you're gonna put the glue right over here by his tail. And if you again, if you're using a cotton pad, make sure it's all pinched up. And you're gonna push it in. And if it's a cotton ball, you can just pop it on there. And there's your little bunny. If this bunny is a little hard, I will show a little one, too, so it's fine. I know there might be some younger viewers, so we'll start down here. We'll re reuse the same piece of paper, and we're just going to draw a little bunny face. So you're going to take a pencil, and you're going to draw a circle again. You're going to draw like an oval shape for the nose, and two little swerve lines two little ovals for the eyes and some big ovals at the top for your ears and there's little bunny again so let's color him in let's make his eyes purple okay. pencil sharpener for the purple so let's do a darker purple yep this is violet there we go, he has some violet eyes, that's different. And let's do, let's color the bunny in with this kind of, I don't know about red, let's see. Let's do pink for the bunny's fur. A little pink bunny with purple eyes. Yeah, and you can color these in however you want, however you wish. Any color works, doesn't have to be realistic. Because brown is a pretty traditional color for a rabbit, but it can be any color, it doesn't matter. Because it's your drawing. And you're going to take the black and just color in his nose, maybe his mouth if you need to reline it. And there you go, you have a little bunny head. And let's draw the little bunny body. You're just going to draw a little, like, misshapen square. I don't really know how to describe it. And then at the bottom, draw three ovals and then a little fluffy tail. I'm going to do the white tummy again, because I think that's pretty cute, and the white paws. And there we go, little pink rabbit. Actually, I want to color in the paws. There we go, there's a pink rabbit. So here are two rabbits. We have our big one, our big cottontail one. You can always refluff this if needed. And our little pink one. So I hope you guys enjoyed the book little craft at the end um look out for next week uh, our book i said earlier will be about corgis so there will not only be the book itself but there will be a um corgi craft so hope you enjoyed i'll see you guys next week bye